Before I start my presentation, I just want to explain one thing, and that is why I really love chairing the Food and Drink Board in Wales. My background is actually farming, so what I actually aim to do is to create value and scale. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create value in the Welsh food and drink sector, and we're trying to create scale. And if we do that, we should theoretically be able to bring value back through the supply chain to the many farmers in this audience. So I think it's important just to explain what I'm all about and why I do what I do. So in terms of my 10 minute presentation, I want to do two things. Firstly, give you an overview as to what we've done over the last three or four years in terms of the food and drink sector. And then secondly, to give you an overview about where we hope to go with our new action plan. So, just one quick slide here about the previous action plan that's been in place for the last three years. The overall aim was to work in partnership with the industry and government to grow, promote and enhance the Welsh food and drink sector. And we had an aspiration to grow 30% from 5 billion to 7 billion by 2020. Now that actually looks a hell of a lot and actually is a hell of a lot. And you'd be pleased to know that the CABSEC uh, recently announced that we've achieved 6.8 billion. So we have grown nearly 30% in the last three years. And I think that's an outstanding achievement for the Welsh sector. And it's not, <laughs> I wish it were what just the Food and Drink Board has done, but it's what the Welsh Government have done, it's what NFU have done, and it's what food and drink businesses have done. And we've done that in the following ways. Firstly, identity. Sure, we need to do more work on identity. And I think, Tim, you articulated that really well. We need to do much more to create a really strong brand. Secondly, collaboration. So a quick show of hands. Who drinks gin in the audience? Not at the moment. Yes, I'd probably more than that in reality. Um, who knows uh, Abba Falls Distillery? Who's aware of them? Thank you. There's a big hand at the back, actually. Thank you. Um, so I don't even know the gentleman who runs Abba Falls. He came to John and myself, uh, the Royal Welsh, last year and said, look, if only you could help me source malting barley for Wales. I reckon there's about 20,000 tonnes, I think that was right, John, 20,000 tonnes of malting barley that could be sourced for Welsh brewing and distillery. Now, I'm not an expert, OK, and I don't know whether you can grow that, and I know that the maltsters are in East Anglia. But the point being is we're beginning to have conversations about joining up supply chains. And do you know, so what, if we come up with some ideas that don't work, the more ideas that we come up with, the more ideas that will stick. So it's just an example of how collaboration is really part of that plan. Thirdly is market development. You know, that's absolutely crucial. And uh, it was actually um, yourself, Kevin, who talking about developing the UK market. You know, it's on our doorstep. Next one is about skills. We recently launched a skills strategy, which is absolutely crucial, because at the moment we don't have the skills in Wales that we actually need to have a really successful food and drink sector. It's crucial. Innovation is important, and I'm sure you're aware we've got three food innovation centres in Wales, North, South and Mid, and if you haven't been to them, you should go and find out what they do, because they're all there about creating value for your product. Security and safety goes without saying, it's critically important for our product. And finally is investment. It's crucial that we attract good investment in Wales. It's going to be tough with Brexit, but we have to do it. So we need to attract really good food processes. And one of the challenges is, is the Welsh food and drink sector is characterised by SME businesses. I think about 95% of our businesses are SME. And it is quite a challenge to actually grow scale of those. So, give you a little bit of my journey about where we've got to so far on our journey. As I mentioned a second ago, we've got 565 SMEs, which represents 95% of our businesses in Wales, brackets, which is a big challenge for Brexit. We've got 15 protected food names, 20,000 employees, and quite interestingly now, we've got our exports of £527 million. It's half a billion pounds worth of exports. And that's grown 21% 20, in the last year. So I really hope Brexit's not going to mess that up. But that's really important, yeah? Really good, really good achievement on exports. So when you actually show people 
pictures of Welsh food, you tend to come up with products, pictures such as these. You know, they actually look really good. And what it's all about is emotion. It's really good products that actually are made. And I think you, know, you were talking a second ago, Kevin, about making sure that that quality is consistent as we go forward. Absolutely important. But it's actually more than that. You need to have a strong brand which is more than just a logo. You need to stand for something. So someone always told me is that in, in life, if you don't stand for something, people ignore you. And it's just the same to me for food and drink. If you're not clear about what you stand for, you'll get ignored as a brand. So I think some of the work that Tim's been talking about is how we make that Welsh brand much stronger. And there's got to be a backstory to that brand. And for me, it's all about provenance. It's about engaging consumers, really making them excited in Welsh food and drink. It's about unique selling points. Yeah, there's no point in saying, we make great products. It doesn't mean anything. Everybody makes great products. Even the cheap stuff that comes in, they say is a great product. Yeah, we've got to think about what our unique selling points are. Those standards must be high. And most importantly, we must connect with the sustainable brand values that was talked about this morning. Yeah? We can't avoid to duck the sustainability aspect. We've got a fantastic story in Wales. Yeah? So, going forward, that was the previous plan. We need to now talk about where we're going for the next five, ten years. What we have done is done some work actually looking at the value of Welsh going forward. And this relates particularly to what people have been saying in England. I forget which one of my previous speakers was talking about it, but it was about the value of the UK market. And if we actually look at the research, 56% of consumers in the UK regard Wales as a great place to produce food and drink. 29% say they want more Welsh food. 59% say Welsh food is, is natural. 75% say it's great quality. And 73% say it tastes fantastic. Well, you know, this market is on our doorstep. If people are saying that, we must do better connect to, to UK. And I don't know if there's anyone involved in um, Wales Week. Is there anybody in the audience involved in Wales Week in London? Oh, that's not good. Um, Wales Week is something that's run, uh, not by myself, by a group of Welsh people that live in London. And their aim is to promote Wales around St David's Day. And food and drink is part of that. And I know that there's a lot of events going on in Borough Market, in Somerset House, to promote Welsh food and drink. And that's part and parcel of promoting Wales to the rest of the UK. So, finally, going on to the next stage of our growth. So, at the moment, the Welsh Government, Food and Drink Board, are working on a new strategy to replace the one I mentioned to you on the second slide, the target of 7 billion. And what we want to do is make it a little bit broader than just an absolute target. And there's three, there's three threads to it. They're down the bottom. Developing our business, businesses, apologies, developing our businesses. And that's about actually making our food businesses grow. I mentioned earlier on there's a lot of SMEs. We need to encourage them to grow. We need to give them resources, the skills, the finances to get bigger. The third bit is promoting Wales as a food nation. We've already said the importance of the Welsh brand, which is far deeper than just a logo. And we've mentioned there about benefiting our people and society. One of the things I feel very proud about is the fact that Wales has got the Future Generations Act. And that's groundbreaking work that I don't see in the rest of the UK. And that's fundamental to our work going forward. So you won't be able to read this, so don't worry. Actually, you might be able to. Uh, in the middle, this represents where we believe the, the food and strength strategy may go over the next five years. It's not final. There's going to be consultation in the next few months. And already, uh, we've involved a lot of stakeholders, including Yen of Cymru. But this kind of represents the strategy. In the middle, the colours there in the wheel is the Future Generations Act. That's something which is fundamental to what we do in Wales. You'll see in dark text that promoting Wales, developing our business, benefiting our people. Those are the three areas I mentioned a second ago. 
And then within that wheel, it's just our way of trying to diagrammatically connect everything together. When we actually launch a strategy, it'll be much simpler than this. There'll be six to eight objectives, yeah, six to eight targets. But what's important, I just wanted to give you a flavour is the fact that we're not just coming up with some absolute target that we've grabbed out the air. We're trying to do it bottom up. What we're trying to do is do it involving the whole supply chain. And as a second ago, and if you can, we have been part of that consultation. So thank you very much for your attention. Look forward to your questions. And at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. Thank you very much.